In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. It's such a joy and a comfort to see this church so full tonight, and many people outside who cannot get in. It's a great privilege for us to have with us the Sullivan family. I want to thank them for being with us tonight to pray with us and celebrate with us. We come here tonight, all of us, with very heavy hearts, with pain in our hearts. We will not expect our time here to take that away. But it's always important to come together. And it's always important to put ourselves before God and to trust in God's love and its care because in that are hearts that are wounded are healed or at least the healing process has begun so we gather here to remember Declan to give thanks for his life to pray for him and to pray for all those, for his family and all those who are close to him. Let us simply put, make ourselves silent before God and ask God's Spirit to be with us, to draw us together, to pray for Declan, to pray for ourselves, and to draw closer to God's love at this time. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our God, you are always faithful and quick to show mercy. Our brother Declan was suddenly and violently taken from us. Come swiftly to his aid. Have mercy on him. And comfort his family and friends by the power and protection of the cross. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. 
Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. We know that Mary, Notre Dame, the woman for whom this university is named, that Mary shed tears at the loss of her son. Those tears fall again tonight, and they fall with yours, Barry and Allison, Wynne and Mac. For Notre Dame has lost another son. But her sadness transformed into joy. And we are with you tonight and with your son tonight in our sure and certain belief that your sadness will be transformed into joy. Notre Dame is a place of tradition. The strands of, of its history are woven proudly and tightly, mostly through the telling of stories. And stories are important because they orient us. They tell us where we have been, and they spray light, a bright color, on the canvas of where we're going. Our Notre Dame stories connect what is now Notre Dame, the finest Catholic university in the world, to a single log cabin on a cold November day 167 years ago. Tonight, there are more than a thousand under this muralled and gold leaf basilica roof. Then there were eight under a leaky shake roof. The written, sung, and oral tales about this sacred enterprise can appear to be the canon of stories of a place that has known nothing but unbridled blessings. Most days we live here in a place that feels like Eden before the fall. But there are times in all of our lives when things happen to us and among us that make us feel as if we no longer have a story to orient us. The experience can be so foreign, hard to fathom, so unlike anything we've ever thought that we'd ever have to deal with, that we feel lost. And being lost leads to fear and sadness and isolation and guilt, and anger, or just a strange detachment that leaves us feel as if we're so disconnected that we might just drift away. Every time we experience death, and particularly yesterday, in the wake of Declan's passing, we encounter one of those foreign, unthinkable, hard to imagine, events. It's as if we want to say, Mom and Dad, I don't know how this fits into the story. Lord, have you forgotten us? Have you written us out of the book of life? No. No, we have not fallen off the page. No, we are not lost. Yes, there are stories that tell us exactly where we are and who we are and where we are going. And the stories in today's readings from St. Paul's letter to the Romans and the Gospel of John 
are such stories. Despite the feelings of loss and disorientation, tonight's stories and the story of our being here together as a community this night tell us that we are loved and we are not alone. The divine scriptures, this basilica filled tonight, the people standing outside, the body and blood that we will share of Christ, not only remind us, but they show us in high drama that we are loved and we are not alone. Declan was a storyteller. And while Declan could tell a good tale and write a captivating essay, his preferred medium for storytelling was through the lens of a camera, capturing the texture of life on film was the passion and the way that Declan created stories that gave meaning and orientation to his and to others' lives. And those who did not know Declan may be inclined to say that capturing stories through the lens of the camera was ultimately what robbed him of life. But those who know him will summarily reject such a myopic byline because you know that telling stories through the lens of a camera is how Declan lived. It is not how he died. This same craft of storytelling, but a different medium, was the same pedagogy of Jesus Christ. Jesus told stories that changed the perspective of those who listened closely. He drew their gaze to what seemed familiar and revealed in it something new and resplendent. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and take you. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. So while those whose hearts were troubled by what they felt and saw in the world, Jesus said to them that their end will not be this trouble, but rather their destiny in this life and the next is to be with him. But Master, how can we know the way? To which Jesus says, I am the way. He does not say, there is the destination, or go down to the olive grove and take a left and you'll find it. He says that the promised land will be found in the way that you live and the way that you travel with me. The lens that Jesus used refocused the fearful lot. Their peace is not a destination. It is found in the way and in the company with which they travel. You are loved, and you are not alone. Declan was an artist and an adventurer, and the focus of his lens on life was like a magnifying glass. Declan was the personification of intense, purposeful enthusiasm. He loved life and poured himself into the parts that he had identified as the most interesting. The study of film, adventure, road trips, celebration. Declan couldn't have one job. There were too many things to do. Filming for football, filming for astrophysics, buying and selling used textbooks. Declan drew others by his passion to the same kind of enthusiasm and light. Why not go to a place in a world that is more different than any of your own? For next semester, he planned to go to China. But more than anything, Declan's most intense enthusiasm was not directed at things, it was focused on people, his family, his friends, his friends from high school and college, his fellow workers, his dorm mates. This is where Declan discovered the stories 
that gave meaning and orientation to his life. And it was a bright and brilliant life indeed. But does the sad and unthinkable reality that Declan only had 20 years of life render his stories or the version of the story of life unintelligible? Are we now mute and illiterate such that the story of Declan is no more? Does his fall mean that he and we have fallen off the pages of the book of life? No. Declan is loved, and he is not alone. And we are loved, and we are not alone. There is a remarkable phrase that we'll hear in the preface of the Eucharistic prayer for Christian death. It reads, For those who belong to Christ, life is changed, not ended. Declan Sullivan's life has changed. It has not ended. This is the focus that our faith, that God invites us to at the moment of trial. And in the story written by Christ, Declan now lives in the most full form, in the best essence of his being. For nothing, nothing separates us from the love of Christ. And while we may temporarily feel that distress or persecution or peril or death renders us alone, we aren't alone. And the most important story of Jesus is one that orients us towards the love that he has given and that passes through us. This congregation this evening had the audacity just before the gospel to sing the Alleluia. In this moment of sadness, how could we dare say praise be to God? But it is our story of faith that invites us. We come together tonight to celebrate Eucharist, which literally translated means thanksgiving. The lens of our faith aids us to see that we are grateful for the 20 years of Declan's life and even more grateful for the eternal life that he's entered. Notre Dame is a place of tradition. The strands of history are woven proudly and tightly through our many stories. Stories orient us. They tell us where we have been, and they spray color on the canvas of where we are going. It's too easy, but also dishonest, to assume that this place and this community has enjoyed only good fortune. We have experienced anguish, distress, persecution, and famine. But what makes this place, what makes you, truly great is that nothing has separated us from the love of Christ. What makes this community gathered here tonight is that despite our trial, we are still with God. For Christ is. He is here. We are never alone, and we are loved. Finish with a stanza of a poem, the last stanza from Truly Great by Stephen Spender. Now the snow near the sun in the highest fields, see how these names are fetid by waving grass, and how the streamers of white cloud and whispers of wind in the listening sky, the names of those in their lives fought for life who were at their heart the fire's center. Born of the sun, they traveled a short while to the sun and left the vivid air signed with their honor. Declan Sullivan has told great stories. His life has been a truly great story. Declan Sullivan, and Jesus Christ invite us into the biggest story.
the story of Jesus Christ's love, that we are loved, and we are never alone. stand. Let us pray with faith and confidence to God our Father who lives forever and can do all things. He raised his son Jesus Christ from death. He, may he give peace and salvation to the living and the dead. In thanksgiving to God for the enthusiasm, the spirit of joy, the Notre Dame spirit that Declan was blessed with and that he shared so generously. Let us pray to the Lord. For all Declan's family, his mother and father, sister and brother here with us tonight, and for all his relatives and friends, for their comfort and consolation, let us pray to the Lord. For Declan's Fisher Hall community, his friends in the athletic department, and his many friends across the Notre Dame family, for an ever deeper faith and trust in the loving providence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Notre Dame family might continue to deepen in the spirit of welcoming, friendship, and shared faith and values. Let us pray to the Lord. For all young people who have lost their lives, whether through violence, natural disasters, poverty, or disease, let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn the loss of someone dear, without the gift of faith, for comfort and sustainment, let us pray to the Lord. For the eternal happiness for Declan, and all deceased members of the Notre Dame family, through the intercession of Notre Dame, our mother and the mother of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers for our brother Declan and for all who have gone before us in faith to eternal life. Free them from all their sins and let them share in the fullness of salvation in the kingdom where you are Lord forever and ever.
Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of Declan. May Christ be merciful in judging our brother Declan. We believed in the Lord as his Lord and Savior. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawn. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself so that from east to west a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready, ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. 
Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, or Bishop Kevin, all the, and all the bishops with the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Remember Declan. In baptism, he died with Christ. May you also share his resurrection when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy there, we, we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day, we will see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. stand and as sisters and brothers in Christ sing the prayer that Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your whole church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I have not heard of you.
Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother Declan, who shared in this Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before Father Daniel gives us his final blessing, I have just two announcements. First, the Office of Campus Ministry and the University Counseling Center staffs are available for support, conversation, and guidance during this very difficult time. Please contact their respective offices to set up an appointment. Second, please join us after Mass for a reception in the LaFortune Ballroom to celebrate the life of Declan and continue supporting one another through this difficult time. Thank you. Um, on behalf of us all, thanks to Barry and Allison and uh, the whole Sullivan family for being with us. And thanks to all of you for coming out and praying with us tonight. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.